Grim predictions for Australia's recession. Let's have a look. Good morning, everyone. Florian Heiser here, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I have my morning stein of coffee, and I thought we'd start this Sunday by having a look at an article prepared by economist Jason Murphy on news.com.au, in which he discusses CapEx spending and a grim prediction for our recession. Now, CapEx means capital expenditure, so it's an important thing to consider. An example would be back when we first started out our architectural practice, 2011. There was still a significant amount of capital expenditure going into mining, into coal, into iron ore. And, well, that essentially helped us springboard our firm from doing tiny little commercial office fit-outs to doing big mines. Yeah, I think the biggest was about 20 million, all the buildings we did on these portable buildings. So it was a good kick for us, and I quite appreciated that CapEx. And you know, now, now it's not so much. At one stage, it was just going crazy. I was hiring people just to work on proposals. This was back when I had four people, four people working from a two-bedroom Queenslander, while four people were renting there as well. They weren't the same. <laughs> I had some pretty good roommates that put up with a lot. So let's have a look at this article, everyone. Australia is in recession, but how bad will it get? This graph gives us a glimpse into our future, and it's not pretty. And before I get into that, I'm going to have a sip of my Stein. Grab yours. And let's toast together. Cheers. Nothing beats a morning coffee, everyone. So let's have a look at this. What does the future hold for us? That's the big questions Australians are asking. And to answer it, we need to know what businesses will be doing. They're the ones who create the jobs, that pay our bills. If they are confident about the future, we can be too. Well, before Jason gets any further into this article, I'll bring up this one chart, just to, well, a few charts. This one is the NAB business confidence from February. Look at that crash, guys, and business confidence there. I'll be interested to see the next data that comes out because you know, business confidence, you'll hope it would jump back up. It would jump back up. We'll have to see. But that is dramatic. That is a dramatic move. And another one to keep an eye on is the job ads. Job ads fell in April a lot. 50% down. That's another big move, guys. So that job ads, you know, you don't hire people willy-nilly. Hiring people is a big investment. You need to you know, keep them on board and you need to train them. It takes some time to get someone useful. Even if they're from a related field, there's always a transition or a competing firm. There's always some massaging. And that's normal. So you don't jump and hire people willy-nilly. One of the bit of advices I got from an entrepreneur was, and it probably a bit too late for me, was don't take on too many people. Do whatever you can to avoid taking on staff. And uh, I probably took on too many <laughs> because we were growing so fast. So that's those two to watch. And then the other is consumer confidence, guys. So what does that tell us about, about confidence and about the future? A lot of people, a lot of people, the RBA is pushing us <clears throat> or encouraging businesses to invest. And I'm hearing rumblings of certain businesses that are investing, that are borrowing money to invest in large infrastructure or equipment. But it depends on your future pipeline. And that comes back to that confidence, guys. That business confidence. So, what does the future hold for us? That's the big question Australians are asking. Okay, and we're talking about business. So, what will businesses do? To answer that question, the Australian Bureau of Statistics released the Capital Expenditure Survey four times a year. It's an important piece of data I always look forward to. When the latest release came out, it sent a chill through the economy. Planned capital expenditure, expenditure slumped between the first time they asked businesses to estimate next year's spending and the second estimate. <clears throat> so, what he's saying here, that's that's a dramatic move. So estimate one and estimate two. Estimate one in previous years, it's always been up. Confidence was there in 2016, 17, 2017, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20, 
2021. We think a recession's coming, guys. And this is why. This is why the government, or not this particular reason, but this is why the government is creating schemes to try and get more money moving in the economy. And that's what that 25 grand grant is for renovators and for home builders. It's got nothing to do with giving free money to uh, to the rich or to the wealthy, although I, I, I don't know anyone that is on 200 grand a year is considered rich. But it's about getting more money out there and moving. It's trying to lift this up. So there's more activity, more expenditure, more construction work, more demand for goods and services. So it keeps flowing through because people are worried. They're all pulling back. You know, and you wait, you'll wait and see. Everyone will wait and see how it goes. So they need to incentivize people to move. Capital expenditure is all the hard things businesses buy. Trucks, sheds, machines, office blocks, and computer hardware. Imagine a Bunnings. Capital expenditure doesn't measure the hammers and drills they sell. It measures the, measures the cost to build the big green building, the car park outside, to buy the cash registered, etc. I don't know. Would cash registers be that? I guess. I guess. It depends. They, I mean, the business have all these different budgets, and there's different ways to claim it on tax. But he's, he's making the point quite clear. It's not your daily, your operating costs. Capital expenditure is important because it shows businesses have the confidence to grow and get bigger. It correlates with spending and with jobs. If they put up a new Bunnings in your suburb, that's capital expenditure and it indicates new people will be hired and that new spending is likely to happen. Yes, capital expenditure is planned in advance and that makes it a very useful piece of economic data. It tells us about the future. Most economic data can only speak about the past. And that's a very good point he's raising here that some people don't realize how out of date some of this data is and that they're making decisions about it. But information about future capital expenditure plans hints at how fast we can get out of this slump, how fast we can get out of it. In the CapEx report, there are three big numbers to pay attention to. <clears throat> how much businesses actually spend in the three months from January to March, that was down 1.6% on the previous three month period. Two, how much businesses expect to spend on capital this financial year, which has about 30 days to go. They now expect to spend 3.8% less than they did when the ABS surveyed them last year. There you go. I mean, this is this is the, we've all seen the sales, you know, end of financial year sale, get, get your, you know, buy this, write it off. How many people are doing that? Are you doing that in your business, guys? Do you normally have a bit of a shopping spree at the end of financial year under the often mistaken hope of writing things off? Or, you know, you just realize, okay, I've got a bit of extra cash. I need to invest in this and this. We'll see. Let us know in the comments, guys. Because I'm certainly not. <laughs> I'm not investing in any CapEx for our business. Last... I'm just thinking back. I mean, we I invested in a whole lot of uh, computers when we won a big job. And the thing is with computer tech now, I can I can keep them running for a bit longer. It's fine. You know, probably the biggest CapEx spent I did was the laser scanner that we've had. And that's about five years old now and we're still chipping away with it. It's still working. So... How much they plan to spend next year? <clears throat> this one is the key because the ABS asked them to update their expectations. And usually this number grows strongly from the, pre from the first estimate to the second estimate. This time it fell. Capital expenditure plans for 2021 are down by 8.8%. That, he's right. That is a drastic move. That's nearly 10% decline in what businesses expend to invest in capital expenditure. And that... that flows through to other operators, even to smaller businesses as well. You know, we were doing a lot of commercial office work, you know, and that's capital expenditure when, you know, a, a business expands their floor plate and does a whole refurb. Or in the retail sector, when they open up new shops, that's work for the designers, it's work for the engineers, consultants, the tradies, the shop fitters. If that capex is down, all those people are going to have less work. And I, I, I can't say I'm really surprised because just cons confidence is so low. So that's a lot of new business opportunities being left on the shelf and a lot of jobs that were going to be created that now won't be. 
The fault is especially strong in non-mining investment, a category that includes retail, accommodation, cafes. An important caveat, the expected capital expenditure doesn't cover education, and with many fewer international students, the education sector is in big trouble, so the reality could be even worse. Well, that's, that's terrifying, actually. That is really bad that it doesn't include that, because, I mean, a lot of people do work for education. The universities love their flashy buildings, guys. How to save... 2019 2020 from being a total disaster so let's have a look at what uh, jason is recommending businesses are nervous about the future and that nervousness can become a self-fulfilling prophecy if they all hold back on their expansion plans then the weak economy they all fear becomes manifest to try to sp spark a bit of confidence a circuit breaker is needed the reserve bank has already cut interest rates as low as they can go so we can't expect anything from them the remaining impetus, if there is going to be any, has to come from Treasury. I don't know. I don't know. What if they go negative? <laughs> what if they go negative? Remember, <clears throat> the precedent has been set in other parts of the world. The Reserve Bank governor told a Senate committee last week that the smartest approach was to borrow and spend. And we seem to be hearing that over and over again. We've got to keep the fiscal stimulus going until the recovery is assured, Governor Lowe said. Fiscal stimulus referred to government spending. It can be used to keep the economy flowing when private businesses and households are nervously cutting spending. See, this is the thing. Our consumer confidence is so low, and that's what they're afraid of in the system, that it'll grind to a halt. That'll grind to a halt. So they're going to try and do whatever they can to spend. But they don't want to, if they go too crazy, then our confidence in our currency is going to disappear. So... He referred to the moment when JobKeeper and JobSeeker programs are due to end <clears throat> as a critical point. This is currently scheduled for September. I've seen when fiscal stimulus is removed too quickly and the economy has suffered, Governor Lowe warned. The governor also pointed out that the government can borrow money at an interest rate of 0.25%, so borrowing is very cheap. The money could be used to build useful infrastructure, he suggested. If we want, I mean, this is the thing, it's the... The Reserve Bank creates the money out of nowhere <clears throat> and then, you know, future generations have to pay back with interest that money created out of nowhere, while existing generations lose the purchasing power of their money. It's it's a, a beautiful system, isn't it? <laughs> well, it can get frustrating, guys. You can go down that rabbit hole and get very angry, <clears throat> very angry at it all. But, you know, sometimes you just got to just got to chill and have a morning stein of coffee. If we want to get businesses sorry, if we want to get businesses the confidence to spend their own money on growing and going back to hiring people, they need to believe the economy will be healthy. The best way to create that belief at the moment is for the government to step in to the gap at this time. So he's calling for more fiscal stimulus, more government and treasury spending. But that is, he's right on the money, that is a very concerning, <clears throat> concerning indicator for the future, for the next couple of years how do you rebuild that confidence would government spending would it um, give you confidence it all comes down to the pipeline guys really for businesses but i'm talking about this from you know construction and consulting experience it comes down to how much of a pipeline you have in the future of work signed up you could be flat out now but the next quarter you got nothing on the books and if you've got a whole team of people to keep busy that can be quite stressful and it can dent your confidence. I know I, I went through that situation when mining started slowing down a bit. We were so in bed with that sector. I was doing everything I could to get more opportunities to bring more work in. You know, schmoozing, getting out there, talking to people. And that, you know, if you're in tender period, that dents your confidence about, okay, we won't invest in that. We'll make do with this. We'll make do with that. Now, if your pipeline fills up, if you've got more future, then you're probably more inclined to take that loan, to invest in that equipment, to ensure your business can grow. But this is telling us that that hasn't quite happened yet. And a lot of people are probably waiting to see what will happen. I, I honestly, I would be shocked if they just remove the job keeper. And even if they cut back the doll down to the normal payment, in September, I would be shocked if that happens. 
because everything we're looking here, there's more and more calls to keep it happening. And there's more and more concerns about what would happen if it doesn't. And it'll come down to businesses. What do you think, everyone? Are you planning some capital expenditure in your business? Or have you delayed what you plan to purchase? You're going to make do with what you have. Just wait and see. You're hoarding some cash, ready to pounce on opportunities as they arrive. Because that's some good advice too, guys. You know, During the good times, that's when you build up your war chest to swoop in and take advantage during the bad times. We'll have to see, guys. But this is certainly something that is foreshadowing what could happen in the next few years. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and you'd like to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can simply watch the videos, share, and like. It helps spread and helps the channel grow. You can support us by joining the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can use our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay or Independent Reserve and KuCoin. You can use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, buy our merch from Heiser Said, the pocket squares you see behind me, or also support us via PayPal. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.